So we're going to take a look at the heart now. So I'm going to take this, this right hand lung here and I'm just going to put it back down to the body, right like that. We'll take the pleura. We're going to cover back up over there. Now we're going to go over towards the heart here. So I'm going to take this pleura on this side and just get this out of the way a little bit. Right in this area, we have the mediastinum. Now we're going to be opening up the pericardial sac in a second. Um, but you want to note that everything in this area in between the two pleural cavities, so we have the right pleural cavity, left pleural cavity, everything in between there in the central region of the thoracic cavity is going to be the mediastinum or the mediastinum. Main thing in there is going to be the heart and the pericardial sac, but we're also going to have part of your respiratory system is going to go through here, part of the digestive system is going to go through here, arteries, veins, nerves are also going to travel through this area. So the heart's the biggest thing, but it's not the only thing that's in this area. So you can see here that we have opened up the pericardium. So this here is parietal pericardium. We can kind of open this up here. You got a little bit of parietal pericardium that we can open up there. Now we're uncovering the heart. We can see that this heart is pretty fatty. Other thing is when we're looking on the anterior side of the heart, right away we see these vessels here, which are not usually here. So this heart has had um, at least a double bypass these two vessels here, which we're going to go over as we go through the parts of the heart. Outside of that, this heart is relatively normal with the exception of the bypass that's here. Okay, so let's lift this heart up and out. We've already cut it out of the way, so we're going to kind of hold it. This is the way the heart would sit in the body here. So I'm just going to turn it a little bit to sit it the way it would sit in me. So if we look at it like this, this is the left-hand side of the heart. This is the right-hand side of the heart. This is the top. That's the bottom, right? We're looking at the anterior side flip it over here, that would be the posterior side. Okay, so looking at the anterior side of the heart, first thing you wanna note is that we have opened up a flap here, and we've opened up a flap over there. And that's gonna show you the right ventricle. You're looking into the right ventricle here, so I'm pinching the right ventri ventricular wall, okay? And over here, this would open up into left ventricle and I'm pinching that left ventricular wall. So you're going to notice right away that between those two walls that the left ventricular wall is a little thicker than the right ventricular wall, which is what we would expect. Okay. So we can see those two things. Now we're going to take the heart. We're just going to turn it a little bit. And if we look over here, let me just grab a probe and we are going to go down through here to here. All right. So I have the probe going through a portion of the heart. We're going to take the heart and we're going to orient it back like it would sit in the body like this. Okay. So if we're holding the heart the way it would sit in the body, we got the probe going up and down over here. That probe is representing the right atrium. All right. So right now the probe is passing through the right atrium and the ends of the probe here, this side. And I don't know if I can hold this better, let's see. Actually, you know what? I'm going to move it down here. Let's do it like this. Okay, I think that's better. All right, that way I can point to it. Okay, so let's hold it down here. So we see the probe going up and down, and we're going to say that this side of the probe here represents where the superior vena cava comes in, and this side of the probe down there, and you can see that big opening there, represents where the inferior vena cava comes in. So again, if I say what chamber is the probe passing through, we'd say right atrium. If we say what do the ends of the probe represent, we would say superior, inferior vena cava. So that blood's coming in this way, joins, empties into the atrial chamber, into the heart. So we can see that there. Now, I'm gonna back this out. We're gonna take the heart and we're gonna flip it over. Now we're looking at the posterior side of the heart. Now right away, you should immediately be able to pick out where the inferior vena cava joins in. So we don't want that opening. We already did that one. Now we're gonna move up a little bit here. And we can see here, if we kind of lift this up a little bit, you can see nicely you got two openings there. And if we just come through over here, you can see one, two openings on that side, right? So notice how the probe now is going horizontally, side to side. Now I'm gonna take the probe, turn it back around, put the heart back in its normal position like this. And now we see the probe going horizontally. All right, so now the probe is going through the left atrium. So leaving it here, I'm just gonna turn it back over again so we can see better like this, kind of stand it up. All right, so inside of here, left atrium. This side of the probe coming in this way, these are gonna be your left pulmonary vein openings. One, 
two. This side here, here is going to be your right pulmonary vein openings, which again, if we turn a little bit like that, we can see these would be the right pulmonary vein openings. Um, so again, the key is that you're looking and seeing the probe going horizontally instead of vertically. That's going to tell you you're looking at left atrium things. And we can see the pulmonary veins going into the left atrium there. All right, so back that out. So we got the two ventricular chambers. We got the atrial chambers here and there, right? And we have most of the openings. Now what we want to do is find our way through the heart. So we're going to start over here at the left ventricle. So you want to note that the heart, if we follow it coming down to the left, we have the apex of the heart down here. It's the most left hand, inferior most portion of the heart here. And we got this flap that we can open up like this. So I'll turn this a little bit like that. So we look up in here, we're inside of the left ventricle. Now we're going to take our fingers and we're going to go up into the left ventricle and we're going to push up, up, up. And we should see our finger coming out here. And what we're doing is we're going from the left ventricle. And let me just look at, yeah, right where my finger is coming out. You should see a couple of flaps in there coming right around the tip of my finger. And that's going to be a semi-lunar valve. So we're going from the left ventricle through what we call the aortic valve into this vessel that we have opened up here, which is the aorta. All right, aorta, let's match that up into the body. So we come up here and we see that the aorta here is going to match up right to here. This is where we match. And that's going to go out towards the body. So we are going to come back down here into what we already saw before, which is the superior and inferior vena cava. So again, notice that the probe is going up and down. You note that you're looking at right atrium stuff here, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava that's taking all that blood from the aorta back, emptying it into the right atrium. So we're going to back the probe out. Now we're going to use our finger and we're going to go inside of the inferior vena cava. And then I'm going to be into my finger right now is in the right atrium. We're going to pinch those right atrial walls and feel that they're much, much thinner than the right ventricle walls that we can feel over here. So very thin walls. We come in this way. Inferior vena cava. Now I'm going to go over here from inferior vena cava through the right atrium, through the tricuspid valve into the right ventricle there. Now, if I back my finger up a little bit, you can see that my finger is right behind part of the tricuspid valve here. So I'm just gonna back my finger out for a second. We look here and way up here is the cusp of the tricuspid valve. Maybe if we open that up a little bit, is that better? I think, yeah. So we got tricuspid valve up there. We can see the cusp. We can see these little strings here. These are called chordae tendinae. And then we can see where those strings collect right there, right where the probe is there. That is a papillary muscle. And then the papillary muscle is going to embed into the walls of the ventricle. So hopefully you can see those parts there again. Cusp, chordae tendinae, papillary muscle right there. All right, so those are all parts of the tricuspid valve. That's an AV valve, an atrioventricular valve, and that particular one is called tricuspid. So just again, we go into the inferior vena cava, into the right atrium, turn around, we come through that tricuspid valve there, and we end up into the right ventricle there. Now we're going to back out of this, put the heart back the way it was here, still oriented the way it would be in the body. Um, and now we're going to go into the right ventricle, and we're going to come up, 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 and we're going to end up coming out through the pulmonary trunk there. Now, if I back my fingers out a little bit, I don't know if you can see down in there. Can you see it way in there? Those little flaps are not really. A little bit. A little bit? Okay. So it looks just like the aortic valve, but this is the pulmonic valve that we're coming through. And then we exit into that pulmonary trunk there. Now, we want to match the pulmonary trunk up into the thoracic cavity. So come up here. And again, this is where we saw the aorta. Now we're going to match it up to here. This would be the pulmonary trunk. Now, if we look down in this, and I think if I hold that down a little bit like that, hopefully we can see this ridge right here going up and down. So that divides. The pulmonary trunk is going to split into your right and left pulmonary arteries. And that ridge right there is going to be where the blood's going to hit that ridge and go right or left. Now, those arteries are going to go into the pleural cavity. So we follow the right pulmonary artery is going to pop out over here. And then the left pulmonary artery would come out on my side over there, right? So we can follow them out. Now, those pulmonary arteries are going to come back to the heart. So we're going to come back down here. And that's going to enter into the pulmonary veins 
which again were these guys going side to side here. So we have two pulmonary veins on that side, we have two pulmonary veins on this side, and they collect into what I'm passing through here now is the left atrium. Okay, so we're gonna back out of this, I'm gonna take our finger and we're gonna go into one of these pulmonary veins here, and we're gonna push down, 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 until we come back out to where we started over here, which is back in that left ventricle. So we're going left atrium, through the bicuspid valve, all the way down until we pop out into that left ventricle there. That brings us back to where we started. Now, what we just did, starting in the left ventricle, going all the way through the heart and ending back here was your general circulation. So general circulation split into two parts. First part would be systemic flow, and that's gonna be blood ejecting from the left ventricle until we get back into the right ventricle over here. That would be systemic from left to right. Then from the right ventricle back to the left ventricle is gonna be pulmonary blood flow. That was the part that went out to the lungs to get reoxygenated. Next thing you wanna see is coronary flow. So for that, we're gonna turn the heart a little bit. So we're looking down into the aorta here. And first thing you're gonna see is if we open up the aorta, you can really nicely see those two openings that we made here. Um, and that was for the heart bypass. So the coronary arteries were either occluded or you know something was wrong with those coronary arteries and they had to make two new openings for the blood to flow into those coronary arteries. So likely these vessels that we're seeing here, these are, are likely um, part of the great saphenous vein that was located down in the lower extremity of this cadaver that they cut out portions of that great saphenous vein and stitch them in up here to take the place of some of the coronary arteries. So again, these stitched openings are man-made openings, but we want to see where the original ones were. So we come way down in here, and I don't know, I think maybe like that. Should be able to see, uh, if I can see it, yeah, right there. So if we look down in here, we can see that opening right there that's going to be one of the original coronary artery openings. There's a little bit I'm kind of pushing onto some of the plaque build up around there. You can kind of see that there. And then the other coronary artery opening was right, I think you can see it. Whoops. Not sure if I can hold this. Can Yeah, like that right there. Kind of right towards it there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that would be the other coronary artery opening. So those are the original openings. We can see what they lead into. Right, so the one opening here, there's one of the original coronary arteries. It's very hardened, a lot of plaque buildup on the inside of that. And then here's the other one here. And that is also very hardened as well. So if we kind of put the heart down like this, this would be the left coronary artery. I'm sorry, wrong way, right coronary artery. And this one over here coming towards me would be left coronary artery right there. So that's where coronary blood flow would leave the systemic circulation. So we're gonna, most of the blood comes out into the aorta. Some of it enters into these coronary arteries. It's carried down towards the surface of the heart. So that's gonna supply all the heart muscle. Then we're gonna flip the heart over here. And we're gonna have coronary veins, which are gonna drain up, up, up until we hit this thing here, which is called the coronary sinus. And that blood is gonna collect in here, flow this way, and empty in right next to this opening, which is where the inferior vena cava joined into the heart. So we can get into the coronary sinus. We can see here, you should be able to see the probe inside that coronary sinus. And again, I'm entering into that near where the inferior vena cava joins the heart. So the blood is flowing this way, and that blood's gonna empty directly inside of the right atrium. That's where we'd rejoin the general circulation for the coronary blood flow. Last thing we can see here is going to be the openings for the fetal circulation. So what we want to do is turn the heart. We want to go in to the right atrium through the inferior vena cava. So we're going to go in here. We also want to go into the left atrium through one of the pulmonary veins here. So we're going to take our, our thumb and go into the inferior vena cava. We're going to take our finger and go into one of the pulmonary vein openings. And when we pinch it, in between there, we're gonna feel a very thin membrane, which is gonna represent the opening in the fetal circulation, which was called the foramen oval. Now that it's closed, we call it the fossa ovalis, but open, it would have been foramen oval. Now, if I turn this a little bit here, you can see 
my finger is right here against this thin membrane. So this and fetal circulation would have been wide open. And if I just kind of trace the outline, you can see that it's oval shaped there. So this again, we're looking at the fossa ovalis, but open that would have been the forium and oval there. And this would have been an opening between the right atrium where I am on this side and the left atrium where my finger is going in here. That would have been open. Now, some of the blood, or I say most of the blood, would have made it from the right-hand side of the heart into the left-hand side of the heart right there, but not all of it. Some of it would have not made it through that opening, would have entered down into the right ventricle, and would have ejected up and out into the pulmonary trunk. The blood that ejected into the pulmonary trunk, if we follow it up in here, we look down in, in here, so we're looking up to where the pulmonary trunk connected and becomes the pulmonary arteries. And we should see, I think right, where is it? Right there, there we go. Right there. See that right next to the tip of the probe, there's a little dimple, little depression. That is what remains of the ductus arteriosus. So this would have been a wide open hole that would have went between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta right here. It would have let that blood skip right from one to the other. And that would have caught most of the rest of the blood in the fetal circulation there. Um, now, there's other portions of the fetal circulation that we'd have to see down in the abdomen. We'd have to see where the umbilical veins and the umbilical arteries connected into this whole system. But that, that would be for another video.